Good morning. It is Tuesday, September 24th. Okay, we love when we have uh, the 24th because something is manifesting in the physical realm. Okay, and with the additional numbers, it's something that you wish for and something that you created uh, with your own thoughts, with your own mind. Okay, because as you know, we create our own reality with our thoughts. So somebody is being granted a wish. There is magic happening here. Um, either there's going to be unconditional love or an, an ending, a complete ending. We shall see. Okay, so the transits for today, the moon is moving from Virgo. Excuse me. I lied. The moon, the moon is moving from Cancer into Leo. Okay, so it's all about healthy self-esteem. It's being warm and sincere, loving, um, taking the lead, confronting problems head on. Okay, but the negative side, the shadow side, it could be you could be self-centered, conceited, overbearing, uh, bully, egotistical bossy, jealous, and possessive, which is one of the worst ones. Um, you, they could literally be breathing down your neck. Ooh. Awesome first cards. Great fortune. Great fortune. <laughs> Great fortune and judication. Every time I see the judication card, I don't know why I want to say judification. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe judification, maybe like... Um, Lying, <laughs> Judah, you know, the traitor, judification. So making a decision whether somebody lied to you or betrayed you or making a decision on a lie or a betrayal with new information, some new facts, seeing if you can move forward. Okay, uh-oh. So that landed that way. Oh, you've got some nice... Uh, money cards going on holy cow you start with great fortune and you're ending with sudden wealth wow i've never had those two in a reading before not that i've been uh reading with the kipper deck all that long but mercury and libra sextiling with jupiter and sagittarius so this could be an offer of a partnership that's going to net you uh bank that's going to make you bank Okay, so a prosperous relationship. It could be with children. It could be with a woman. Let's see, Mercury sextiling Jupiter is an active mind with a broad outlook. It's good judgment, a sense of humor, and not really wanting to be bothered with the details. So it feels um, abstract. If you're not wanting to bother with the details, it's abstract, and it's also looking at the big picture, or looking at the bigger picture. So this could be concerning women, it could be concerning children. Why I say that is because we also have Venus squaring both of the nodes, okay? So when they're squaring both of the nodes, it means that there is a problem um, that's going to be presented. Uh, you might have to make, oh, you might have to make a decision about something and that is what judication is it's presiding okay I don't remember this being reversed it wasn't reversed and this is about children or your adult children there is you know events surrounding it with sometimes it's affections and attachment so this is very personal, and with Mercury and Libra, this could be you talking to your kids, to your women. <laughs> you see how that landed? Okay, we'll leave that there. I looked at it for just a second. I did not see what it was. Okay, so there might be going so, uh, something going on with the children. Um, it could be a birth. It could be baby shower or a related social event. Could be marriage, uh, romance. Um, 
the combination of Venus and the nodes has to do with uh, women and their interests, like finery, uh, spa day, beauty salons, bridal preparations of flowers, all things feminine and lacy, which, it, you know, it is, it is Libra, so it's flowers and scents and aesthetics. It's totally aesthetics, okay? And concern for a loved one, so fussing over a loved one. This doesn't feel like there's anything negative related to the connotations. Uh, any any negative connotations related to it. Excuse me, I said that wrong, like backwards. Okay, the Mercury transits can mess me up sometimes, and they might mess you up too. With Venus and Libra squaring North Node in Cancer and Mercury in Libra, drive safely. It's like giving your kids a kiss and saying, go ahead and do what you do best. Um, it's almost like promising to, promising not to hold them back, promising not to hold anything back, okay, not, not holding back energy, money, uh, attention, love, or ideas, so this is, I will help you as much as I can, as much as I'm financially able to, but it's not necessarily just finances. Although on the first glance, we got great fortune, sudden wealth, the investor, and I love you. <laughs> so, I mean, it could very well be financial. So great fortune is an indication of a vast amount of money, usually, but it can also be about energy. It is a number 26, so this is inheritance. It's a legacy. It can be striking it rich. Okay, and then... It's something that you definitely deserve. So you're being granted some kind of monetary or energetic resource or it's being um, decided on right now. Now, earlier I had done a reading. I ended up deleting it because it was very personal. Um, it was about my kids, my son and my daughter. Okay, so I probably should have posted it because this is saying the same thing. There is a decision being made. Maybe somebody had put in an application for a grant or a scholarship or some kind of financial bonus because they're under age. Okay, and they're waiting. They're waiting for their ship to come in. We've got four of cups. Okay, so roots, a burden, a roots, investor. So there could have been somebody that kicked them out of the home. Okay, so there's been a separation from the home, uh, probably in terms of a child and underage. So it looks like they were waiting for some kind of application that they put in. Okay, they're bringing my attention to the crest in the back. CM. Chases money. Chasing money. This could be a loan. It could be a grant. It could be like food stamps. It could be... Some kind of paperwork was filled out or there's some kind of new fact or new travel um, creating money. Resurrection. So it's like getting a check back. Resurrection. Luxury. Not being happy. Fourth house, root. Being restricted in the home. I want to hear keeping, I, mean, I want to hear, I'm hearing keeping a tab on you. A tab, a tally. Uh, a tab, a tally is an accounting for expenses. Okay, sorry, I was gone for about 20 minutes, had some clients in here um, drooling. 
<laughs> drilling over the beautiful Indian items we have in here, or native items, excuse me. Okay, so somebody is not really happy at home, and it feels like they're oppressed there, like held back, hindered, um, kept under tight rein, restricted, no, you can't do this, no, you can't do that, no, you can't do this, by the father, their father. Now, it doesn't have to be the biological father. It can be just in a position of authority, and it kind of feels like they rule with an iron thumb, iron fist, iron thumb, iron fist. I don't know why they're telling me that. That's <laughs> that's the phrases they're telling me to, you know, to say. King of Pentacles is an investor. Okay, this is decisive action in the physical realm. Deciding to invest in somebody. Decisive action. Leo into Virgo. We are Leo going in, excuse me, we are at the Leo moon. Okay, and it's going to be moving into Virgo by tomorrow. Okay, so we're already in the moon in Leo. So that's kind of, I keep hearing ego, ego, ego. So this person here, this king of pentacles has a huge ego. Leo the Virgo, ego. And criticism so somebody here is restricted in the home um, they're controlled by somebody who has a huge ego okay and uh, this person this the money man the investor or the father is very uh, critical uh, criticizes constantly to the point where somebody is not happy in the home and they just want to get out so this could be A divorce, a divorce from the parent, from the parents. Weighing the pros and cons. And the thing is, they want to be free, or he, or she, actually there's two people here that decision is being weighed on. I don't know if it's the parents or if it's the children but this feels like children oppressed children in the home okay so with the ego and the criticism in this person it's like okay they were bringing they were bringing my attention to the two discs in his hand and I kind of thought that looks like plates okay and then I noticed the volcano going off with steam and 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 smoke in the background there's uh, lava coming down here so it's kind of like somebody hurdles anger aggression um they throw their ego at you and they throw their arrogance they're very arrogant you'll do what i say or else is what it feels like There's some kind of decision that's about to be made here. We've got Nine of Cups and Three of Swords. So there's an old wish and sorrow. Trump fulfillment. And then we have trauma, Three of Swords. Somebody's trying to figure out, they're releasing anger, and there's an old wish that's being presided on. This almost, it feels like a divorce, a separation, um, custody, there's custody, custody is an issue here, there's a custody issue. There's been some kind of application that's put in. And there's a little bit of worry here that the decision might not be in their favor. Let's see what this says, main female.
So it looks like this was in the past for the mean female. I'm, I'm just beginning to work with the Kipper cards. In addition to memorizing them, their placement is very important. Main female is looking this way. Judication, so at present. There's something going on right now, okay, in the recent past. And I'm, I don't do, you know, rec I don't do the recent past, present, and future readings, but that's kind of what I'm getting here. Like, this is a recent past, this is present, fast forward to the present, and then this is future, is what it feels like. So, in the past, there was restrictions in the home, somebody was overburdened, and there was arrogance, ego, and a lot of criticism going in, and they've decided that it's painful, and they don't want to go there anymore, so this is like moving out of the house, this is a separation of two people, or separating yourself from two people. waiting to hear if you can move forward. So there may have been some kind of application put in. Um, divorce, emancipation, custody, legal guardian. There's some kind of paperwork that's being put in. Main feminine. Oh, wow, cool. So we got magician. And you know what, guys? I'm just going to have to tell you that about half these cards are what uh, a third of these cards came out in that earlier reading that I felt was so personal. And I'm still seeing uh, some elements of it personal because because the cards don't lie, right? Okay, so the main female, she is a magician. Wow. She's a queen. They're drawing my attention to the crown in the back. Okay, so she's queen of the castle. She has her own castle. And with the magician, she's creating. Today we have a 369 code, which is creation, intel, uh, intelligent design. I was getting intelligent design yesterday so intelligent design would be creation you're being called to create you're being called to design something this is destiny You're very, very intimate with your transformations in power. And it's like you you understand that you can use your thoughts to create. So, Nine of Swords and King of Cups. Nightmare. Cruelty. Declaring war. News of war. Or studying, planning strategy king of cups okay so somebody's i want i want to say somebody's manufacturing but they're um yeah you know because you have to design something what do i want this to look like what do i need to think for each fabric you know think of it as a loom you know the looms are all the strings and it's about it's you know how how you weave it. How's this day going to go? Okay, well, we've got to go here, dip a little bit, then over this, and then around this. So it's like a daily planner. Studying. Somebody is watching to see what you will do. I'm hearing the Lover Boy song. Everyone's looking to see what you will do. Everyone's looking at you. Somebody's manifesting some powers. This is deep. Um, judgment is Pluto. It's death. Uh, tr death and rebirth. Uh, transformation and power. So there's a creation. Somebody is transforming themselves. And they've been studying. Taking a look at other people's addictions, obsessions, and compulsions studying it trying to look for an in or an out so this main feminine here is watching somebody 
to see what they'll do. I'm hearing observe and report. How do I create security? How, how do I change from being powerless to powerful? How can I... Oh, creating a wake-up call. So this person... That, this person could be creating or trying to manifest a wake-up call for the love of their life. And it's practice. They're practicing exactly how... Because you have to be very careful with your words when you're manifesting. Okay, Be very careful with your intent. So this person is carefully weaving the intention, studying the person and their addiction, obsession, or compulsion. And they're trying to figure out exactly how to manifest correctly because they want it to be powerful. They want it to be potent. They want it to be life-changing and life-saving. We know that there's going to be some panic and some worry and, and some initial punishment because you have to go and hit rock bottom before you can come back up. So it feels like <laughs> getting pulled over on their horse. <laughs> So somebody could be getting pulled over on their motorcycle or uh, in their dr uh, driving, What if it's a car, a truck, a motorcycle, it's an automobile or some kind of vehicle. It's like they're getting pulled over. Somebody's manifesting karma for somebody else. What was I going to say? Um, hold on. Uh, let's see the exact words for it. It's very, um, it's just a matter of time and you're going to get caught. So somebody is uh, manifesting some kind of conditions here in order to teach somebody a lesson or they're practicing their story. You know how sometimes, you know, if you have something to say, you have to write it out, right, so that you get all the words correct. Because if you speak off the top of your head, sometimes you can leave out details. And, you know, with the transits, uh, with the transit today, Mercury, sextiling Jupiter, uh, you don't like detail. <laughs> so this is literally leaving out the details. So you're going to write it down in order to manifest this karmic lesson for the addiction, obsession. Uh, this could be even an intervention. Ooh, an intervention. Somebody wants an intervention because there's no communication of it. It's just happening. It's being woven. The storyline of this intervention, uh, divine intervention, divine intervention. The story is being woven, creating the divine intervention that's going to help this person or stop this person from their obsession, their addiction. It's like, I almost feel like it's a final confrontation. Like, you know, if somebody's an alcoholic, they're going to get pulled over in their car or on their motorcycle. Okay, if somebody's doing drugs, they're going to get caught stealing a vehicle or breaking into a house or, you know, drug or alcohol-induced war okay a lot of step look at this stabbings all these swords this is nightmare okay somebody could also be having a lot of dreams okay nightmares where things aren't making sense and it's divine intervention it's messages from the angels and the funny thing is somebody asked me the other day can you dream with somebody else and i said sure why not if there is one person that is conscious in their dreams and they can talk and they recognize that it's a dream why couldn't a second person especially if you're friends or you meet up because there's that transference of energy and the, uh, the likelihood of you having that kind of talent also um, is also strengthened when you're together so technically a, a, a 
couple, a male and a female, or pretty much anybody, if you're sleeping in that close proximity, you're sharing energy because we're not separate. Uh, you know, we're we're not separate. I, I'm. Um, we're all made of energy so as you guys sleep like you're exchanging energy free flowing whatever and you could literally exchange the atom with the information in it to uh, with the information of a dream in it so you can connect in the dream world and sometimes you can send people messages sometimes it's just divine intervention it's their consciousness coming up because it is nine of swords is a purge Okay, purge. So, releasing some very scary things in the dreams, okay, and manifesting it in the physical reality. So, literally, some of you guys can get pulled over today. Okay, so don't overindulge. Um, there can be, I think last week we had this... Uh, T-square where Neptune and Pisces were conjunct and I was seeing like dark shadows in the water, a frenzy, a gang up, a setup, um, like like when, when the whole, when the town bully dies and they have to call the state police in and the entire town knows nothing about it, they're all in it together, it's kind of that kind of um, conspiracy, that's what it is, conspiracy, you know, they conspire together so it's like the universe and the divine feminine is conspiring. They're study and they're studying and watching and planning and practicing, intercepting this person's demons. Okay, let's move on. Now, if you guys don't know, this is not like a storyline. This does not fit like a movie. This is, you know this situation this situation this situation and all of this may not exactly apply to you it depends on you know what what your natal chart is and where your houses fall according to your rising sign and where transits are taking place you know like uh, mercury and Libra, sextiling jupiter and sagittarius um libra is the seventh house and sagittarius is the ninth house but in your chart you may have the, the uh, mercury in scorpio which would make this fortune it would be your second house so it would be about property it would be about money it would be communicating to children in regards to opportunities in terms of money and property okay so you see what i'm saying it's different and it, it comes out in a different area Okay, so it's a matter of strategy and planning and manifesting. You really want this. You really want this transformation, this purge. You want somebody to purge their addiction. Okay, and it's in the works. Okay, so next one, change and sudden wealth. 911, okay? 911, look at that. 911. So I don't know, maybe maybe a car goes flying into a casino, a car crashes into a casino. Emergency, emergency, urgent, urgent, emergency, urgent, 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 urgent. Okay, so they're giving me that song, um, urgent, emergency, 911. Okay, so when we have change, which is uh, not coincidentally, <laughs> uh, which is synchronistically a nine, another purge card. So, guys, we got nine, nine, nine. Okay, there's an ending that's happening. And the thing is, with um, when you're doing the right thing for yourself, when you are feeding your happiness, okay, it creates a condition, okay? A condition called unconditional love, which means that it's constant, it's never ending, it's infinity, it's always there no matter what. You're surrounded by a bubble of love. Okay, so with nine, it's unconditional love, it's purging, and this is a card of change. So 
the path that you were going to go before, you have to change your direction. You're being forced to change your direction or you're willingly changing your direction where once you are moving away, it looks like now the detour is to unite. Two of Cups. This is this is romance. This is love. This is sex. <laughs> it's the faded pair. It's yin and yang. Okay, beauty growing out of confusion. I'm getting beauty growing out of confusion. Um, not knowing which way to turn. This is signaling that it's time to get up and go. Okay, so you're either going to get up and go, leave this relationship, or it's telling you get up and go love somebody or go show somebody how much you appreciate them, how much you love them. And it's also saying, take a little trip, take a little trip. Maybe you need to do some scenic driving with your partner or this person. This is detour. Oh, duh, Venus is squaring the nodes. So there's definitely a change in direction. Somebody's going to be taking action. This is physically getting up and going. I want to say Mars, but it's not. It's time to go. And then we have the love card. <laughs> it's time to go and it's time to love. It's time to go. Wherever, whatever, it doesn't matter where you're going. It's, it's still an unknown. I don't see a direction that you're actually going in here. Hold on. But I do see that you have support. You have support in whatever you should choose. There's somebody there that's supporting you. And then sudden wealth. Sudden wealth is like a reserve, a rush of energy, getting all of a sudden having all this energy. Leave the one you love. So you could be taking a trip, maybe to Vegas, who knows. Prince of Wands and Five of Pentacles. Okay, so we've got ambition. Somebody's got clear goals and they want to make a big chunk of money. I'm leaving so I can make a comeback. This is like somebody um, leaving their family or leaving their relatives or leaving their home because they need to make some money. Prince of Wands and Five of Pentacles. Five of Pentacles is fear. They're worried about money. So it, this almost feels like they're they're traveling, like they're moving out of state or they're working on some kind of gamble, taking some kind of risk. For some of you guys, you're leaving Las Vegas. I don't know why they told me to say that. You, you probably can't wait to get the hell out of there. I felt that way when I was there. You know, I liked living there for a little bit. At about two years in, I was hating it. I gave it a chance. So, you know, I gave it two years. And at the end of two years, all I could think was, I fucking hate this place. I want to go home. Okay, so there's there could be somebody here who's leaving Las Vegas or leaving for Las Vegas. They're anxious to leave something behind. Yeah, so there could be a change in direction with a love relationship. You guys may have to separate and somebody may have to travel for work. Because the Two of Cups is right side up and not reversed, it's just a physical splitting.
This can also be a fight about money. This is ambition. This can be anxiety, worries, and fears. It can also be uh, projection coming from a place of fear. Why would that be clarifying sudden wealth other than somebody's leaving that? You can't buy me. This Okay, I was wondering why. I'm looking at this, the Prince of Wands and the Phoenix, you know. This is like the prodigal son. The prodigal son leaving uh, the relationship on the journey of their life. The prodigal son. They're leaving to make it on their own and they will rise again. They're using their ambition and their passion and their anger to fuel them into rising. But there's definitely some concerns about money. So somebody could be angry. Somebody could be angry because they lost a big chunk of money or lost some property. Losing the property. There's something being held, withholding, something being with This great fortune is being withheld because of judi judication. So it's like something's on reserve. It's like you, it's like when you go to the gas pump and you stick in your credit card and they reserve $50. And if you don't use it, you still have to wait like three days for them to release the $50 that they put on hold. Okay, so this is like funds release. Somebody's deciding on releasing funds in terms of the home. So this could be a bank loan too. Some kind of loan in order to renovate or upgrade. Ooh, big tonight is uh, tones in the left ear, big time. And it was something that you've always wanted to do. Something you were sorry that you did not do yet. It's like, I should have done this before it feels like. I should have already taken care of this. So it almost feels like taking care of old chores that you hadn't gotten around to um, because now it could be an emergency happening and some trauma or drama involved around it. Possibly a fight because you can't fix it right now or you're angry that it's going to cost so much to fix something. I want to hear a little bit more about this moving out. Let me clarify the Two of Cups, please. Okay, I was going to ask to clarify this next, and that came out. I see it turned over. Okay, so moving in another direction, still being loving, still being caring. So you might be coming up with some new idea in terms of your own business because we have the occupation card. Okay, you have the occupation card, which is what you love to do. So a lot of you guys are, le are trying to start your own business. You're going to try and make it on your own. Taking a new direction where once you used to work for somebody, somebody else was your boss. Now you're stepping into the role of, oh, you're romancing the idea of being your own boss. You really, really like that. Um, you're a go-getter. You're a goal-getter. You're a goal-getter. This is Mercury and Taurus, so communicating about comforts. I have to start my own business. I have to make money somehow. So somebody's uh, trying to figure out how, trying to get their hustle on. Community reversed. Okay, so. War on the father, you blank too much. Community is reversed. 
So this is not something the collective is experiencing or doing. This is coming straight from the Divine Feminine. The Divine Feminine is creating, is weaving the story. I feel like this is the person that's created this and created this in order to free people. This one is being free from burden, being burdened in the home, um, being free from somebody's rule or tyrant, ty tyranny. Excuse me. This one is manifesting a karmic lesson for somebody who needs to purge. But it, it needs to be done. This is privately, okay? If this is an intervention, guys, remember I was saying about an intervention. If there is an intervention, this is private. It's not public. Not a lot of people know about it. Um, and also, too, if they're trying to manifest this karmic lesson, they're not speaking about it. They're not telling anybody about it. They're simply willing the energy and putting the intent out there. This is definitely a private matter. And I'm just, I, I'm hearing, and you don't share secrets with others. So somebody can get arrested. They can go to jail. They can have the worst thing happening to them. And you're going to keep it quiet. You don't want to talk about it. You're not talking about any of the situation. You're not talking about the addiction, about them having to pay the Pied Piper because it's nobody's business. It is nobody else's business but yours. So we have the new moon in Libra coming up followed by the full moon in Aries followed again by the new moon in Scorpio. Okay, so what I see with that is... Uh, we just, okay, we, oh, let me start with the Pisces full moon. With the Pisces full moon, we unconditionally express that something had to end and that we truly love everyone, humanity as a whole. That's totally Pisces. Love with no bounds. Okay, on the other end, we needed to create boundaries because we gave too much of ourselves. Okay, then Libra, unity, harmony, diplomacy. <clears throat> Going along to get along, needing other people's help. So over here too, this person who has to quit, they're not getting another person's help. They have to do it themselves. This is Libra season. It's funny too because it feels like the person who has this addiction is constantly thinking about it. They're feeling they want it to end. They could be the ones wanting it to end. And then when you are feeling the same way, I want it to end also. So both of you guys are in agreement that you want it to end, that you would like to take life in a different direction. Okay, you would like to work on yourself, to do the kind of work that you love. Changing the direction of the partnership. Doing what you love best. Doing who you love best. Okay, so privately, just between the two of you, you guys have plans to manifest the life of your dreams. And it looks like you guys are going to be very successful. Especially when you're pooling energy. That's, the, you know, double, double the money, double the fun. One word of confirmation from the Archangel Space. Confirmation, affirmation. Beloved one, you are loved. Okay, Archangel Chamuel, I am helping you with your spiritual soulmate relationship. Ha! <laughs> The angel is helping you, okay? It's not it's not crowd-supported. It is privately supported. Um, divine intervention, okay? 
judgment and the magician, somebody's asking for divine, two people are asking for divine intervention. Two people are asking to change the direction of their lives in a relationship. Wow. Um, I love it when they're exactly pertinent to exactly what they fall on. Okay, so this situation, overcoming difficulties. Archangel Jeremiel, the worst is now behind you and you are surmounting any previous challenges. Overcoming difficulties, you know. Nine is unconditional love too. You know, you can unconditionally love someone even though they cause you pain. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Love you. Take care.